name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Uh, welcome to my channel. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below, leave your Ethereum or Bitcoin address down there. I am doing a 100 subscriber giveaway and 150 subscriber giveaway. Random winner at 100, and I'll be sending $20 to that uh, winner. And then at 150, I'm going to be choosing a winner myself, whether it's an Ethereum coin like this, storage coin, or a Bitcoin storage coin. So whatever you guys desire and whoever wins, that's what I'll be sending to them uh, in the mail. And obviously $20 on your Ethereum address, Bitcoin address. Moving forward into the market here, moving right into it, 251 billion coin market cap. You know, everything went down yesterday and then popped back up over that 6,000 uh, mark last night. So are we on a precipice again? I, I guess you could call it a precipice. I just see it as, you know, Bitcoin and it, coin markets, we're not going anywhere. The coins aren't going anywhere. Cryptocurrency's not going anywhere. And um, it's just the elephants being able to manipulate the market because we have so many investors and not enough use cases. And that's why Bitcoin will always keep going up in price because their only use is just transacting, moving it from this place to this way place and that's it. There's no smart contracts involved, so on and so forth. Ethereum is the godfather of smart contracts, so it's not gonna go anywhere, but it is having trouble you know, scaling up due to you know, the way uh, the ERC-20 token is set up. So, uh, with proof of work. So uh, it, it is what it is. I mean, the elephants can do really whatever they want, and we'll get into that um, a little more um, moving forward. But this is, we're going to go over some news and um, some uh, some perspectives that I think you guys might want to want to look at just to maybe peace of mind and then things to think about um, a little later down the line, you know, short term. Bitcoin dominance, 41, almost 42%. We were down to like 39, 38% when we were on a, a you know, kind of on a, small uptrend there and now this downtrend is hit and of course bitcoin dominance takes over it investors it's all they're really playing is bitcoin so uh moving forward i don't really want to you know talk about the coin market everything doesn't look too good i think wakey chains up 50 percent right now which is good to see but that's really the only double digit out there at the moment um so i wanted to go over eos real quick you know china's latest government backed crypto rankings put eos first Bitcoin 17th. And I wondered why are they putting EOS first according to this, you know, uh, news right here. Uh, EOS top ranking is attributed to the outstanding technical advantages in transaction confirmation efficiency, network throughput, and transaction costs of the protocol. So that's what they're basing on as being EOS top ranking as, as first and Ethereum second. So, uh, you know, there's obviously that, that uh, competition between Ethereum and EOS. Um, you know, with that being said, you know, they even say it here, EOS mainnet launch, you know, was, was a huge, uh, you know, face technical issues, criticism, freezing some accounts. I mean, they had issues and all they're doing is patching as they go and they're reacting. So again, I don't like EOS or EOS, however you want to call it, um, just based on the people who run it, you know, the owners, um, based on, you know, big money, like, um, the macro traders and so on, like Novogratz and so on, they're going short on EOS. They don't believe that they're going to, they could build a community. It's things like that, you know, and it's, that's why I call EOS a duck. It's just simply that and a duck. But, you know, when people are writing things like this, Mari who will it for uh, cointelegraph.com, you know, anybody can say whatever they want. I mean, I, I, I read, um, you know, actually Chinese news, Chinese journalism and so on and so forth. And they think high power blockchain is the next thing coming out from actual Chinese China, from people who are live in China and are around cryptocurrency in China. Um, that's what they're saying. So I'm not saying she's not there, Marie Hulit, but, you know, it, it's take, take it, you know, what you will. I do a lot of cross referencing and cross researching to make sure these people are, are um, giving us the right news. And sometimes you just kind of run into it and go, you know, maybe you're just making trying to make money today. So it's kind of weird where they come where they come up with this stuff. But, you know, based on these things, outstanding technical advantages in transaction confirmation efficiency, network throughput and transaction cost of the protocol. OK, I can see what you're saying, but at the same time, it's all it's all belief at this point. They don't have any technical advantages that they can show you. You know, in transaction confirmation efficiency, they can't show you that because they're, 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 there's not any efficiency. You know, as far as the hundred nodes go, they have to have all those hundred nodes in order for everything to work. Um, and then obviously they can scale up from those hundred nodes. But again, you have to have belief that these hundred nodes are not going to do something in their own interest and not in you, in our own all of our best interests. So 
network throughput, you know, and transaction costs of the protocol. Okay, I, I get that too. But again, you're, you're kind of hitting for the fences with your network throughput with those 100 nodes. So you're swinging for the fences for scalability. Um, it's, you know, it's all or nothing really when it comes to EOS is what they've really kind of put their business plan, you know, um, in motion towards. So if it works, they've hit a home run. If it doesn't work, oh well, looks like they're already planning to fail and then they're, they've kind of safety netted themselves. So it's a duck, I'm telling you, but you know, you can make some short term gains on it in the short term if you want and you don't really don't care about the market. I mean, you really guys really gotta look at it from that point of view and I'll get into it a little bit more. Bitcoin price drops, okay, moving forward. Bitcoin price drops, hacks and FEC regulations this week in crypto. So this just kind of tells you, you know, Bitcoin's down eight to 10%, Ethereum's down 11 to 15% and uh, the whole entire 13% for the whole coin market cap. And they're, you know, saying following a pre precipitous drop by EOS this week. So, you know, they're blaming it on EOS for it. And so far, EOS has 34 accounts have been frozen due to, the, to some phishing, um, you know, hacking going on. So the bulls, eToro CEO compares crypto to 2001 Apple. And I agree with that. And I'll get into more of that in a little bit. Uh, fund manager bullish in anticipation of custody. So uh, Bitcoin will hit. So there's a lot of bulls out there with a lot of obviously positive remarks saying, hey, don't worry about this $6,000 price falling down and, and they're considered really right when it comes to the little guy um, but when you, you have big money and you put it in and all of a sudden you drop and you're, you're losing a lot of money it hurts but discipline is really the big thing short-term uh, gains is really hard to do you know, with all the with the volatility of the market so that's what I'm trying to figure out uh, and we'll get into that a little bit a little bit later so hacks obviously we've had hacks big karma's bit thumb has been hacked three times Blockchain researcher predicts EOS will leave massive exchange hack. I've talked about that in other videos. Um, adoption, um, U.S. Senator, you know, he had to return $130,000 because it could have been some sort of uh, bribe or something. So according to law, he had to give it back. Um, mining in China is flourishing. Square, you know, has, has their own um, uh, grant. Uh, with license grants or grant it's a license so uh, they can exchange vir virtual currency so it's good things to see you know overall when it comes to Bitcoin and in, in, in the crypto world uh, moving forward you know the Cardano Wall Street's entry in crypto sector will bring millions and this is what the Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson great guy knows his stuff um, moving quite slow when it comes to to Cardano but uh, what he says is what's often missed by the cryptocurrency is going to die broke is is going to die broken record media is that is that after the next wave of regulation wall street is showing up to the party with all their locked up capital that's tens of trillions of dollars entering the space eventually future is bright now he is right that when it comes to saying that you know when we have wall street enter the crypto segment there's definitely going to be trillions of dollars okay definitely with that being said, you, you guys got to realize a market, a coin market, and a stock market, they are markets of trading, correct? We all know this. It's you trading, you know, for this coin and that coin and trying to make a buck is what we're all trying to do, buy and sell, okay? But you really got to look at the, you know, the underlying of what a stock market is and what a coin market is and why the coin market is so volatile as compared to the stock market, okay? Um... You know, there's guys out here that are, again, comparing the crypto market right now trading to 2001 Apple trade, you know, um, and that is because um, we're not looking at a coin like a like a company, OK, because it's a decentralized thing, so on and so forth. Well, the coin has a function, OK, just like a company in a stock, you know, you that you buy stocks or shares in that specific company. Okay, so let's take Apple. Apple's a stock, okay? And then you can buy shares in that company, and then you wait for it to go up a little bit, and then you sell off your shares, and you make a little bit of money, okay, right? So what is Apple doing? Well, Apple is making phones. They're always coming up with new research, and they're always doing something to better their company. That's a centralized company, okay? So they have to make money in order to bring their stock up, and everybody makes money, and, and, and Apple looks like a very valuable stock. Okay, so when it comes to coins, what do we have 
as far as valuable coins. Okay, we have Bitcoin, because all it does is you can move things from this place to that and, and verify the transaction. You have Ethereum, okay, so it's the godfather of stock of smart contracting. So you can uh, add a smart contract on to the, uh, to the transaction as well. Okay, everything else that we have is not being really being used, you know, by businesses or by people and so on and so forth. So, I mean, that's where we're really having a problem here is the use cases of these coins or the blockchains and so on and so forth. The coins are going to make the market go, not the blockchains. The coins are. So the coins is what's valuable on the market, not the blockchains that back it. So we need to have use cases for these coins. It's as simple as that. And we don't have enough use cases. And that's why things like Limpo are things that I like because they're going to have use cases coming down the road where everyone's going to be using this stuff. And use cases is what brings coins, coin value up. Okay, not the blockchain. It's using the coins. It's as simple as that. And that's why Bitcoin's going to keep going up. It's never going to go away. All you do is you want to move money from here to here. That's all you need. You don't need smart contracts. You don't need a low-key coin. You don't need that unless you want to be private. Then you use Monero and you use Zcash and stuff like that. So that's why those coins aren't going to take a hit. So there's there's those type of factors that we I think we all have to really realize that even when we have trillions of dollars of, of stock market money coming into the crypto, it's the wrong type of money because now we just have more elephants in there that can put their foot in the water and make the you know price rise in an hour and take their foot out the water and make the freaking price go down. We need more use cases and obviously we need more regulation. So um, it's unfortunate, but we do need it. So I did want to go over this real quick. That kind of goes with that. Cryptocurrencies aren't currencies. They aren't stocks either, okay? So if Bitcoin were primarily a currency, the only salient measure of its success would be its adoption by buyers and sellers, sellers of products and services. Okay, so again, so if, if you know, a, a POS system, if I have a point of sale system and I take Bitcoin, Okay, and this is what this is really saying. Um, and let's say it's worth $4,000, okay, of US. And then and this is kind of what this is saying, and I'm kind of breaking it down so you don't have to read it. Um, one Bitcoin becomes then $2,000 based on the market going down. It just all of a sudden dropped, it, you know, from last night to today. It went down 50%. Let's just say that happened, okay? The merchant has just lost $2,000. So he sold $4,000 worth of beer and now he only has two thousand dollars waking up. So you know it's it's the reverse equation is even more serious for the farmer who invests one bitcoin in four thousand worth of grain, planning to sell for eight thousand dollars in the future, but then only to find out, you know, at, at harvest time, it, it would itself have been worth sixteen. So he made a contract for eight thousand dollars when when bitcoin was at four thousand dollars, and now all of a sudden bitcoin's at eight thousand dollars, but he's already made the contract. For eight thousand, so when it was time to harvest, he should have made sixteen thousand. So all that time in between him growing it and making these business, you know, um, uh, uh, contracts with these people that want to buy his grain, it's now gone up. And but he's stuck on the price because he made this contract four months ago or five months ago before their harvest time. It, it, so this again, use cases for these for these coins. It's too volatile, and people are not going to want to use these coins if it becomes volatile. They can't use it. They can't make money on it unless they're a stock trader and they understand the market. And, they, and so you're forcing people to play a market they don't even want to play. You know, so th it's that's kind of where we're sitting. There's not enough use cases for this stuff, and it's it's a it's a huge drag on production. And it, again, so it is no surprise to see merchants running away from Bitcoin rather than toward it. It's too risky. It's too volatile. Nobody wants to sell stuff and lose money because their money dropped in value dramatically. So it, it's as simple as that. And it's, that's kind of what we're hitting on everything. And it's unfortunate to see that that's what we're hitting, um, but that's what happened. So positive things that I wanted to go over. Crypto tourism, <coughs> excuse me. Crypto tourism is growing for better or worse. So this is something that I actually wanted to go across. And this is what really gets things mainstream, okay? Crypto tourism. Now you're having cruises and all this stuff, and then and then you're getting on board with other people. You know, crypto nation, blockchain cruises, crypto cribs is like Airbnb, but they take cryptocurrency. So when you deal with other people who are in the crypto market, okay, it's easier to become mainstream. And then you know, when people and these type of people, especially somebody like me, I want you to come in the market. 
So if you are having trouble, you know, understanding things and getting into it, you know, people are more than happy to help you out, you know, as far as your friends and people you trust, you know what I mean? To help you out, to get into these things and take advantage of, um, you know, the ups and downs of the volatility, if that's what you want to do, you know, um, you know, buy a, you know, buy a cruise ticket when Bitcoin goes up and then when Bitcoins go down, you go, OK, well, look at that. I just got it for, you know, a discount, but it still depends on how you look at it. But this is it's good to see that, you know, again, education or solicitation, um, you know, they're, they're doing Crypto Valley tours, um, ICO tours and newer, you know, the tours. So, you know, they're doing a lot of things as far as the tourism goes. And they really want it to keep moving with the tourism because if it does hit that, it'll become a traveling thing. You know, crypto will become more mainstream for travelers and so on and so forth. So uh, that's a good thing to see. So, again. Moving forward and through all this volatility in the market and how we went from 67, 6,800 all the way back down to 5,800 and now we're back up over to 6,100. A lot of volatility involved here of up and downs. Again, I had to figure something out and Profit Trailer as a crypto trading bot was my uh, what I figured out. I've done almost all the training when it comes to the online training and reading and demoing and so on and so forth. And really, it's, it's really easy. I mean, it's really just you know, an employee that you're putting to work and then you, you manage that employee. So it's really cool to to uh, see that I can actually get this. It does cost, you know, some money, but, you know, I think I'm going to use it for about six months. And uh, if I make a good profit, I may keep it. If not, I think uh, by that time, the market should be on the up and up and I shouldn't have to use it anymore. But this is going to sustain my short term gains and at least some, something can be working when I'm not able to. Um, so the weekend's been very busy for me. I didn't make a video yesterday, and this is kind of one of the reasons why. So, um, profit trailer. Again, it monitors everything from the dashboard. It shows you all your possible buys when you have pairs of, of coins that you, you know, if you were trading in Bitcoin or Ethereum, it'll show you the pairs of coins that you specifically set, or you can, you know, trade all pairs if you want. Um, and then it'll show you your profits and loss and where it's going and so on and so forth. So you can possibly tweak your, your configurations if you need to. Um, and then the DCA is your dollar cost averaging. I call it the average pur purchase pricing, same difference. But this is where dollar cost averaging, obviously, so when it, you know, the price drops, it'll buy in at certain levels. So you don't have to, it doesn't have to go up any much higher for you to start making a profit again. Pending, so it'll show you all your pending orders and so on. And it'll show you all your final sales um, and all of your profit and losses from those final sales. Dust, if you have some small amounts of coins that have been sitting in there due to all the trading that you've been doing through the bot, the, the, the bot will eventually get rid of that dust. So you won't be sitting there with a bunch of bags of different coins of dust that you can't even get rid of because it costs more to, you know, for the transaction fee than to move it. It will eventually find um, a good spot to buy more of that coin and then sell everything off, you know, so you can make a profit on all that dust, so on and so forth. It's, it's a great platform. It's a great user-friendly platform. Um, you know, the configurations are very easy to do. Um, it's just a little, you know, as far as a manager, you're just learning, you know, the management part of it and then you're configuring it. So it looks like it's, it'll be, you know, profitable, you know, to me, for me on a weekly, daily basis. And uh, we'll see, but I'm gonna get that going next week. Um, but I did want to touch on that. I don't have any affiliate links to Profit Trailer. You know, again, he, uh, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a, you know, financial consultant when it comes to my business. But as a, a YouTuber, I'm just a YouTuber. I'm just trying to help everybody out. Maybe you see a perspective that you maybe not be seeing to lower everybody's stress and show everybody maybe some outs that they can possibly use to stave off, you know, short term losses and so on and so forth. Again, I don't consider it a loss until I until I sell out or buy, you know, so I haven't taken any losses yet. But it doesn't look good when everybody's in the red and everything keeps dropping. We all think we're buying in at a, at a, at a low price and then it even goes lower. So it's very uh, stressful, you know, and, you know, disconcerting a little bit um, for morale. But, you know, I, I do want to, again, show these, you know, on YouTube so everybody can see that there are ways out. Um, there's definitely other, you know, trading bots out there if you guys want to look at other trading bots. But I think Profit Trailer is more user friendly and much easier on the go um, for me to uh, manage and so on and so forth. So last but not least, Crypto Fear and Greed Index. I always use it. 15 today, 17 yesterday, 27 last week. I mean, down we go to the bottom again with all of our morale. And um, shitty to see, but again, the elephants are controlling the market. Overall, when it comes down to it, we don't have enough use cases for this stuff. We're not giving you know a chance for people to come in 
Um, Because even when I talk to people, they don't even really get what I'm saying either. So, you know, uh, take it with a grain of salt. But, you know, I hope everybody is learning something. Again, I am still doing a 100 subscriber giveaway, 150. So please leave your Ethereum or Bitcoin address below and I'll be picking a winner then. So my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. It all helps my channel and please like the videos because that does help for YouTube algorithm. Have a great night.